Might as well I'll come back to the shop. I know, I know, I know. I meant it. Um, this is number 80. We're almost there. 88 is the middle. 88 is the middle. However, they are getting so short, or they're getting shorter. Uh, every time I open one of these videos, the, the the playlist list goes back to the top. I don't know why it just does. Any road. This one is 10 minutes, then 15, then 12, then 12, then 14, then 15, then 11. These are really short. 16 minutes, 18 on 28. But that's swing arm replacement bearings. So we're at 8. We're at... Eight were at basically ninety in the in the actual videos. So for the next fifteen, sixteen videos, the longest one is sixteen minutes. So we should be able to fly through these. Let's see how it goes. It's gonna show us. He's going to show us an arse cheek. Hi there, welcome back. Okay, back to it. The next one cometh. You remember this from last time. Thank you for all your amazing comments. Oh. By the way, really appreciate it. That was loads and loads of fun to make. And yes, I know. What's that say? Is it Wrench Guitar Works? I know, it's quite a few of you said. Wrench Guitar Works? Wrench, Wrench Guitar Is that Wrench? I can't yes, I know, but it's not finished yet. It's a work in progress. And like I said... Like, That's probably one of the nicest things he's actually done. That. Last time. One thing that I may do is profile this round, actually, well, like that, cut it sort of like that in a curve. So when you look at it in the front, it's kind of curved like that, which will look quite smart. No, just just, just that one butt ass weld and this other weld across it. It's like, oh my god, Dolly, it's probably really thin, but you've got something that at least doesn't look like hammer dog shit. And weirdly enough, if you put filler on that, it's going to be so easy. <laughs> If he puts filler on it, come on, Matt, but with that. Go rounded inlet and then put a um, a sheet across it and then like a bar in there of, of mesh, you know, like wire mesh. It's really cool, keep the leaves and birds out of it and at the same time, let plenty of air in. I think that look quite nice. But anyway, before I do that, I've got to put the bottom piece in. So that's next. Put the bottom piece across. There's a radio. Even the underside doesn't look bad. It goes right underneath there. It, well, that one looks shite. This other side That kind look. of ingresses slightly into that shape, so I've got to curve it up above that. Can't obviously press down on that hose. I can't squash it or restrict it at all. It's got to have the ability to flow. So that's the task today. Let's get started. It is cock handed though. <laughs> cock handed, cock eyed. It's like one's got a tight radius, one's got a bigger radius. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Let's get the grinder out again. Dude, just, just get a bracket and put it on the wall and you can hang it off it. Oh yeah, we're, we're getting rid of shite music, out. we? We'll be able to fucking stream through these because we're getting rid of this shit music and we're up in the playback speed. So we're really just going for it. What the fuck are you... Oh my... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he's just going for it. Cardboard, window, <whistles> out of it. Oh, now we're getting a bit of cardboard out, right? I see. Oh, it's still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I just welded that bit on. See, the thing is, as soon as you weld, then you, you, you're not fucking it, because you can always. You can unweld the weld, but you can cut it off. But you're making more work for yourself, and then that nice, pristine bit you had, you've already now stuck a big blob of tack to it. Which, if you could avoid, avoid at all costs. Oh my god, come on, wake up. <laughs> oh, burning through discs again. No wonder he doesn't use one mil discs, it goes through them like they're going out of fashion. Let's see if he's going to follow through with his... His welds. That is such a horrible... Who came up with that cap? It's got like you know a tan khaki kind of beigey colour, <laughs> a colour in every colour possible, and then radioactive bloody neon green. Looks like the ooze out of the turtles. It's like what are you doing? Who came out with that? Fuck's <laughs> sake, garish. Ah, oh. 
Another disc. Another disc. Another disc, another doubt. You're using the, turn it around, then you the ground will be in your way. Oh fuck it. Oh <laughs> I'll take it back, it wasn't better in the heavier vice. I thought it was chatting shit then. Oh my god. Nice. Nice. Just go for it. Oh, we're getting to really... Okay, no, what is that? What is that? Oh, hey, I tell you what. Ugh, come on. That is actually uh, the smartest thing he's ever done, is to get the profile and roll it onto some paper. I'm surprised he didn't roll it clean. Oh, that's it. Did you test fit that, Del? <laughs> no. Of course you didn't. What's he doing now? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's, that's a work of art, is that? That's a work of art, is that? Now, with this, right, it's flimsy as fuck. What you should have done is put it on it, curve it on, without doing the hole. Curve it first, then put the hole in it. That's going to be far easier. Number two is, as a complete thing, put it on, tack it, and then walk, chase it around, tack, 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 bend it, tack, tack, bend it, tack, tack, bend it until you've got it enclosed. Then cut your hole in it and do what you fucking want. You've now made it, it'll twist on you. Because that's one hell of a bend he's got to put in there. Oh, it's not even the right size. Oh, no. Bridging tack. Oh, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's chasing it, just badly. Why are you welding on the inside? Forget the inside. Oh, no. Oh, you're getting impatient. He's turning his tacks are turning into long runs. See? He always does this. You look right lurched over. Stop. Reposition. See, people say, what is it, a grinder and paint make you the weldy way? And it's a grinder and filler. <laughs> you got that wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, facets. I love facets. But you didn't put that hood on the other one. I can hear the music fuck off. There we are. Stop. There we are. Oh, at the end of the episode. Oh, my God, that was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> We are like, not even 10 minutes in. Well, here we are, starboard side done. I uh, love this. Still got to do that to the port side, so that still has to be finished. Do that next time, or possibly the time after. But for now, that's the starboard vent hole finished. Just got to blow some paint over it, and start on the mudguard. Why is your hat half on? Thanks for watching. Right, so I'll tell you what's weird, right, is that he's got 11,000 views. And if we go back to a video that I had back here, I'm not going to, but if we go back to one of these videos that are like 30 minutes long, oh, well, let's sod it. Super Legra. Right, this one. Personal contact. Chicken wire. 16,000 views. Oh, has he had a drop off? He's had a drop off. I, I take it back. He has had a drop off. Let's pick another one that's around about 30 minutes. Oh, no, hang about, this is further than we are, you div. Uh, 40 minutes, what about that one? Spent another 25, so we'll cut that. Oh my god, 23, so this was dropping off. It was dropping off, that's crazy. So he's, he's, he's losing, he's losing views. Over this project. 
Uh, so it's like put ten minutes in. It's a lot less editing, a lot less effort. But uh Yeah, next one, let's go. This is eighty one. Called Let's Get Back to Business. Wow, what the hell happened again? October We went from the nineteenth of August to the eleventh of October. We've just missed September. Wow. Any road, nine thousand views. And you gotta remember, this is this is from twenty seventeen. Alright, this is nearly six years ago. This is a long time ago, so accumulated throughout the series. He is probably gonna get more <laughs> you know what's funny. In these videos I can see people at the beginning, it's getting ten thousand views and it's you know, you put a new one up and it, after a week it's got like five thousand. But it'll eventually I know it'll eventually get up to ten thousand. People are watching me do this more than they're watching his thing after six years. Oh my god, you poor sod. Any roads, let's go with it, let's go. I don't want to swallow this crap, this we change crap music again. Right, so obviously he's at long last, right, whatever. Is Um Oh I know what's coming. <laughs> so um no, I don't know what I was going to say then. Sod it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I know what's coming. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, he's had like a, it's like a month. An entire month. No, not an entire month. An entire two months, basically. 19th of August to the 11th of October. That's nearly two months. Not off his videos, man. Just off this. I also noticed, you might want to notice, take notes, that there's... Oh, yeah. Bastard. There's a seat pan there. Oh, it's fucking music. There's a seat pan there, look. Why are we going slow motion? Right, are you ready? I don't know what happened. I literally... This bit is a bit hazy to me, because I was literally just dealing with him crying like a little girl. I wasn't actually watching his videos. Oh, yeah? What's your work back now? Oh, I didn't watch his videos anyway. How long has it been since we did anything on the fighter build? Honestly, it's about time we got back to it, don't you think? Now, loads of you have been saying, what happened to the fighter build? Where's it gone? And that alarms me a little bit. <laughs> Makes you obviously been off it so long. You think we've given up on it? Not at all. I made a promise right at the beginning of this build, we will finish it, and I will show you it riding up the road. And that is going to be kept. I'm not going to abandon this, I just wanted to take a little break from it while I did the stuff on the turbo bike. Turbo bike came in, we did some new exhausts on it, changed the chain of sprockets, did a few other bits and pieces and of course painted it. Now the intention was to bring the two bikes in as two dual projects at the same time. That was the initial intention, to have a second project bike on the go, something simpler, something less involved than all this fabrication, something we can do little repair jobs and upgrades on and that was the intention, but you know what they say about the best laid plans. So what it ended up being the issue was that the few jobs we did, like change sprockets, bits and pieces, that's fine. But the paint had to be done in one go, that was the problem. As soon as I stripped it, I realised that I had vulnerable paint work around the garage and I didn't want to start doing grinding and welding, which is quite, it's quite a hostile environment for, for fragile paintwork. So I had to then just push on and finish the paintwork all the way through. And I think that was an amazing series of videos. It's had something like 100,000 hits collectively between those paint videos. And I'm absolutely grateful for that. That's amazing. Thank you so much. And this isn't a paint job he did. This is a paint job I think Mackie did, I think. I don't know. For engaging with that the way you have. The paintwork is awesome. I'm so, so proud of it. And riding it around, you just like, it's like having a new baby and showing it off. It's just fantastic. So the bike's going to be stood there for a while. I'm going to ride it around. I'm going to get used to it and enjoy it. And there are lots and lots of other things to come. I think he got rid of it straight away. I'm going to paint the wheels. I'm going to change the brakes. I'm going to possibly paint the forks. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. Because this is so original and so mint. They kind of add to the provenance of the bike to demonstrate that it is only a 15,000 mile virtually brand new looking bike. So if you change that by painting the forks, that can't then be seen. So all that sort of thing to come. But for now, I want to get back on the fighter build. So there were two fabrication jobs left. Let's show you what the first one is, which we're going to do today. And then I can show you something that I managed to pick up at flea market, car boot sale, and that will form the last. See, he says flea market first, and then car boot sale. <laughs> Just smells, smells, and it smells of... I want to be an American! <laughs> 
the last fabrication job, which will be a little series coming up. But for now, like I said, let's show you what we're doing with these front inlets. Uh, right, so this was the last fabrication job you saw. This is the air intake vent for the right hand side. And I finished that off, that's nice. That it's weird, right? It's, 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 it's a really, really okay amateur job, is that? Welding wise and finish wise, right? It's, you look at it and go, well, that was clearly done by some guy in his garage, right? But it gets worse. <laughs> when he did, like, the Triumph Rocket... Uh, not the Rocket. The Triumph Triple Woody... Um, Three-cylinder jobby. Where did the exhaust on that? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how I wanted the entrance of it to look. Really chuffed with that. And I think that will complement the bike. A few of you asked, do, do the wheels... Do, the wheels. Does the steering turn? What about the back of it? What about this? Are you, are you complimenting yourself on that? Whatever that is. Turn and clobber this. No, it doesn't. It's at that angle. Well, show us. So that the steering comes in. I'll show you a bit closer oh. to the time. The other one has oh. got to be finished. That's the issue today. Uh, this one, I just bolted it on. It didn't have the obstacle of the radiator cap and all that in the way. This one's just a straight one. Much so. Generally speaking, you'd start with the more difficult one first. Find out what you're going to do so you get an aesthetic. So you'll have to do this and come back. Simpler, and I like leaving the easy stuff till last and doing... I just get stuck into the harder stuff. So, well, hang about, you did the... What? <laughs> That's the opposite. The other side was the harder one. Even, oh, even, you, even you said so. <laughs> of the radiator cap and all that in the way. This one's just a straight one. Much simpler, and I like leaving the easy stuff till last and doing, I just get stuck into the harder stuff. Anything that's more challenging, I prefer to get that done. So, this one wasn't finished, and all I have to do... That's why on this bike, you started with the nose cone, which was the easiest one to do, and you fucked that up. You bent a rim a slight bit, you filled it with filler, you put some holes in it, you dented it a bit, you drilled an hole and Frenched it with the most worst welding we've ever seen, and you pepper-potted it and then bailed out because you can't drill holes straight. Today, if you look at them like that, all I have to do today... Why the so... is it cut like that on the back on purpose? Is, as with this one, I rounded it off that way, took that edge off it, and then put this mouth... Oh, that he said was not a... He says, yes, I understand that might be an issue. I'm going to do a sweep back. And then he's like, oh, no, I think you're all fucking idiots. There's not a problem with it. And now he's now going... <laughs> Make your mind up. Lip round. Uh, inside which, later on, I will put some gauze or some mesh. I've got the gold mesh. Uh, you can get any colour of that, so whatever. But I'm going to put some mesh in that to stop leaves and whatnot getting sucked in. So that's all for later. A little bit. Like this, if you remember back to the start of the project, this little hole there has got an LED side light inside it, or does sound like a marker light, and that needs a bit of mesh over it as well, so that'll... But you said you weren't going to do that. ...will be part of the same look when it's done. Possibly even the vents down on the belly pan, don't know yet, haven't you? Fucking mesh. What is this, 1992? Mesh. I used to know a lad called Jack who was absolutely obsessed with, he had a, a Renault, no, it's a Clio, he had a, a cup, it's a cup Clio, I think. And he just wanted to tear all the fins out the grill, right, and then just put chicken mesh, and they sell it at, like, discount auto parts kind of places, and it's just like, it's the worst shit you could get, aluminium mesh. It's like, fuck, you're the fuck extractor fans. <laughs> <laughs> this one today that's got me rounded so as that sits that way i've got a i've got some mesh like the it's grid it's straight up grid stainless steel it's like i think it's like two mil thick um for the drain <laughs> there's a hole you know a drain for the garden and there's a downpipe from the 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 the, the, the... I can't think gutter in for the house and it just goes down and there's a waste pipe from the fucking uh, basin in the in the, the sink in the in the kitchen right you like you do and then the dogs will just fall down it right well they won't fall down it they're trying to get in there anything that's tasty in there whatever so i just got a bit of grid and put it in there so it's now flush with the patio and 
stainless steel. It looks lovely. Oh, lovely. It looks like a bit of gridding, a bit of meshing. It's well expensive. It's like 50 quid just for a bit that was 50 by 50. At 500 by 500. Bent the edges in and plopped it in. and it, It's tight. It fits perfect. Right? They can even walk on it. It's that fitting. And uh, that's what I use that for. You're not fucking put it on a bike or a car. What is wrong with you? Round it off around here to mirror the shape of the other side and then put that lip around the front. So without further ado, and stop waffling, let's get on with it. Welcome back to the fire build. We are so excited. And he's back in there getting that fucking grinder out again. He's got loads of paintbrushes, look. Loads of disposable paintbrushes. At least he learned his lesson in that way. Why have, the thing is, why have we got all this kicks? He's got some brand new paintbrushes there ready. Mm. 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 If you have no idea about this project, you are in for such a treat. I wish I was you. You know, like when you you've got a favourite film, you know, or you you haven't seen Breaking Bad yet, or you haven't seen The Expanse. Well, the first two three seasons of The Expanse, or you haven't seen. Aliens, yet yeah, or alien, and this and it, and you're like, who are you? Who are you? And you're like, I haven't seen it before. And you're like, oh my god, I envy you so much because you're in for such a treat, kind of thing. It's just like, ah, damn it! <laughs> if you haven't seen this series, oh, I can let it go. If you are, if you haven't seen this, what comes next? What did he say? Oh, sorry, we've got, a, we've got a catch. Everything he says. That's the whole point of this series. We've got to catch what he says, because that must have been a gem. Hello, old friend. Long time no see. Hello, old friend. Long time no see. Oh, my God. Uh, comedy for your nan. And that's an insult to your nan. Any road, yeah. So, if you don't know what's coming up yet, you are uh, in for a treat. Right? In for a massive treat. I can't wait. I really can't wait. And I actually don't know how it happens. Um, like, I don't know how it happens in the video. I just remember later on going, Oh! Uh, that happened. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm glad you took a template of the other one. Or did you just draw around it? It's just like, yeah, it'd be right. Fuck it. God, he goes through discs like they're going out of fashion. He goes through grinders like they're going out of fashion. Whoa, ho, 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 there, Shep. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus Christ, he just doesn't learn, does he? He's got a linisher. Granted, it's a shit linisher, but he's got one. I'll do, don't do it on top. Please say, if you flip that, there's something not on the other side. I want to see, because look, one side's got loads of drawings on it. Do we have something on the other side? No, no, look, the other side's probably got nothing on it. He's had two months off. Oh, my God. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, my God. No, sorry, we're going to have to watch this normal speed. This is just too good. This is what makes these videos. Let's go full volume. No, we'll go full volume. Right. Lines. And then you just start burying some lines in it. Like that. His hand's underneath that. Right. Fuck it. Why does that matter? No gloves on, but what he's holding. Now, I think he might have stung himself there, or nearly. Now he's holding it like a spark. What were you saying about guards and if it explodes? That's going to go straight in your mush. And he's using the side of the disc as well. Go on, go on. Jesus H. Christ. Like, look at that. Look at this. This is not me speeding it up. Oh, I might as well leave this because he's going mental. Look at that vice move. 
I've just noticed he's got a, a, a garage alarm, like a you know a shed alarm thing. Good, because someone might go in there and nick it. And I've not been funny. This is the hammer dog shit. Is the hammer dog shit is one of the most wanted bikes in the? If you think about it, it literally is probably one of the most wanted bikes in the country. There are about ten thousand people watching this series. And I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are like, oh, dude, I so hope you get this bike. <laughs> it's like, that's a lot of people wanting one specific bike. Oh, we're at it again. The thing is, he leaves so much meat on it as well. When you see his line is, he's like, there's a good five mil there. It's like, Wow. Dude, right, you you haven't drilled holes in your benches, but at least get a G clamp or something. Just one. Just one. We're going to fly through these. This is great. Especially if I double it up. Oh, yep. Out comes a, at least he's tech. I tell you what, he's learnt to take his bikes and put them outside, put cover on them. But he's put them outside so they're not in his bloody way. Because then it just opens up his workshop to like literally double the size. What is with the cap all the time? Is he just feeling secure if he doesn't have it on? What are you doing? Please stop it. That is not how you armor something. <laughs> unless, unless you like Terminator, and you can just lock in position, and like people could hang off your fucking fingers. You're like, I'm moving. <laughs> Which Intel isn't. I know, like, so probably think he is, but. It's not even pushing down with it. I lay it on top of the... Look like that. Lay it on top of the jaws, flat. It's basically a rolled flat surface, so push down and tack on top of it. No. Oh. oh, no, here we go. It's only thin sheet metal. Someone buy him a Linisher. Oh, they did! <laughs> that's not Sherwood, is it? <laughs> he throws everything. They're not the same. Stop moving it. Maybe we can see it. I know we're on double speed, but stop moving it. Oh my god, that's horrific. It'd be all kinds of different thicknesses as well. You've got two bolt holes. The fact that he's just going with one is really bizarre to me. Oh! <laughs> Solid! And as he taps it, it moves. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> it literally nods down. <laughs> you got to love it. Let's see if he does it with this one. Oh, he's learned his lesson. Don't like a burke. Come on. That's it. Tap this one. Tap it. Tap it. Oh, I did move that one. Here we go. Give it the balls. We're on through another episode. We're only 30 minutes in. Right, there we go. Back to fabrication. My absolute favourite pastime. I think you all know that. I love doing that. Eight hours. You're making something that didn't exist before. Literally creating something. Absolutely. Council estate people who are druggies. What I mean by council estate people is a bit harsh. What I mean is people who live on council estates who sup off the council all their lives who have done nothing but knock up a 17-year-old girl. Them fuckers can create something. Something extremely complicated. A hu another human being. Or seven human beings. And they're just low-life druggy scum. 
<laughs> Great. Love it. Um, no need to body work it yet. I was going to paint it. There's no point. The, the two of them are the same shape, the same angle, and the same length, and that's... Do not believe you. Do not believe you. Not the same shape, obviously. <laughs> one's massively different than the other. The most important part. So when you're looking around the bike, one's not going to look odd to the other. Oh, there will be some mesh... That coffee's wrong. It tastes a fair liquid. I think a bit of ferro liquid's got stuck in the seal. Putting them in the end, I may open out these holes a little. I'm not sure. I don't want to restrict the airflow. I'm going to measure the area of that hole and then refer that to the original area of the, of the front chute. It's nowhere near. Oh, no, because there's the tubes, the little duct in. It could be close, actually. I'll try and get it as close as I can. But it's, you've got a hard lip, so you're, going to, you're doing something funky. It's all wrong. So... You've basically got this going on, where you've got a box, uh, poof, and then, like, just chop the end off, poof, like that. So, your airflow is going to come in, and then it's going to, well, I don't like doing lines, so you've got some that come in like, pew, and you've got some that come in and go, pew, and you've got some that come in and go, pew, pew, like this, and bounce around, right? And then you've got other ones that come in at this angle and come in at this angle. But what you have is, if you can see, very few are coming in like this. Oh, okay, you know. I should have done straight... Let's do straight lines. Because if they don't hit anything, this is what they do, right? They, they travel in a straight line. So you'll have very few, because you're travelling forward, you'll have very few that do this. And the reason why you have very few, almost no molecules that do that, is because... They're all randomly doing this, and you're hitting them. So what you have to do is you have to come across one that's here going this way as you come into it for it to... And the thing is, it doesn't because you move. That's the thing. Just imagine, right? So we've got we've got some air, a molecule that's going... A, 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 a thousand molecules, let's just say. But it's going here like this. Right? It, it, it's... Oh, let me put it another way. It's there. Right, it, there, and it's heading that way, but because you're moving along, you know what I mean. Because you're moving along, by the time it gets to where that lip edge is, it's here, right? It's moved that distance. So you see, you've missed that void, and then by the time it gets inside this, you've moved along a bit more, like that, right? It's moved over here now. So you see what I mean? You, you, you end up missing this void. Right, so no matter which way you go, you know, some's coming across there. Because obviously we're either moving the part, the particles move and you're moving. But you can see that, you know, they're coming in like this and they're bouncing around. And then this bounces there and this one comes in at this angle and ricochets up there. As you're, because this is the thing, you're moving. But you can see there's always going to be a void there, Right. And what happens is, is that these things don't get drawn into there. This one here, as he's, as he's, as he's bouncing in like this, right? Another one will, I don't know, another one will come in, hit here, just say, bounce up and clap that one like this. And then this claps up there like that, you know. The, but for some reason... There's, this is all bumpy and shitty. There's another one coming this way. Because <laughs> it's because it's just chaotic. And then that bounces there. This ricochets back that way. This ricochets back, just say, this way. And then it hits another one that's coming in like this. And this ricochets off. And this one ricochets... Goes pew! And ricochets up there. Now, what you've got here is you've got this happening, right? Now... Let's, let, 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 let's start again. Let's start again. Let's just go very, very simple. So we've got two. One is coming in like this. And he hits here. And I'll keep the lines continuous. And then, because further up your... Or further down your thing, like this, right, further down here, you've got um, a bend or something, right? So we'll have a bend up here. Like this, just say, right, just just go with me, right? So one before 
has already gone round this bend, right, or there's a, a step or a restriction or something, and basically it's on its way back. It's on its way back, and it, it hits an imaginary one midair like that, and it hits another one imaginary there, it fires it this way, and these two hit. So this one goes, pew, like that. Oh, bloody hell. This one goes, pew, and hits there. Our other mate here goes, pew, like this, all right? So you can see a restriction has caused this thing to r roll, it's gone the other way. And then what happens is, is this one is now on a mission from God, right? It hits, it hits this surface, bounces off. But as it's coming in like this, of course, there's another Derek here who's coming in, right? Or he's coming in at this angle. And he hits him like this. So he goes like that. This is what restrictions, oh, for God's sake. This is what restrictions do. So this one bounces off, say, that way. Right, this one bounces off. Now he's going into the stream, right? So he bounces off this surface. Just say, uh, yeah, bounces off that surface. Bounces off this surface. But then hits another one because it's hit another restriction down here. This one hit there, hit there. And then this one bounces off, just say, uh, that way. And then our green friend... E ricochets off this way. And you see, we're going back into the stream. And this is the problem. If you have, right, if you have this a perfectly smooth pipe, just say, you know, something that's perfectly smooth, with no, no, no steps and nothing, right, or the very gradual, you know, no steps and nothing, just a very, very smooth pipe. What will happen is Mr. Blue goes like this and he goes bouncing down here. La di da di da. Mr. Orange comes bouncing along here like this. Right. And then they smack. But when they smack, Mr. Orange bounces off like this. Oh, bloody fuck me. Mr. Orange bounces off like this. And then he bounces and off he goes. Mr. Green, on the other hand, bounces like this. And then just bounces up. And then just bounces up. You know what I mean? Just ricochet blah, 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 all the way down. And it's literally just like getting a tube and putting balls in. And I might actually do that. I might get loads. You can get loads of BBs, coloured BBs or something. And then just slap. Because gravity is great because it's a constant acceleration. So we'll just put them down things. And when you see they'll collect up where you go got reduced diameter, all of a sudden they'll bounce there. And you'll see them hitting. We'll see if we can do a bit of slow motion footage just with the, the camera or something. Something like that. Just see what happens. But when you create areas that are behind there, it's not that it causes... Because uh, people say, oh, it gets sucked in. It's not that it gets sucked in. There's lack of pressure there, right? But what happens is, is it's just a void where things can really move at higher velocities. Because that's the thing, these things are whizzing around, but they're whizzing around pinballing. So their progression isn't that quick. There is no sucking. There is no sucking. There is nothing to attract anything towards them. Right? There's none of that shit. It is literally just loads of balls bouncing around. Right? And, you know... Where there's dense regions, when you make a, a volume, it just bounces. It's going to bounce that way because nothing's stopping it going that way. So then you get a tendency for things to, just basically through chaotic motion, to move that way. As it is, they're probably a bit too small. It just happens so quickly we don't notice. So I want to trim a bit of that back, just use a little Dremel grinder and just take that out of die grinder, remove them out a little bit, so I'm not going to worry too much about body working them just yet. That's them created, fabricated and bolted to the bike both sides. That's now done. Next thing will be the front mudguard. Now, I've got a big stainless steel donor mudguard. It's, it's in a cupboard at the moment. Um, paid 10 quid for it in a... Um, auto jumble went over there the guy was just packing up the best time to buy anything at an auto jumble it had 10 pound written on it kind of smudged out game of 10 jobs done so that's a big full it's a 480 degree mud guard that came off an old british bike sorry a 480 degree that's a big full 
is a 480 degree mud guard that came off an old 480 degree my British bike and it's stainless which is fantastic so I can cut that up chop it up and I can make a front mud guard for this because it absolutely needs one it looked weird without it and it's it's even an MOT failure so it's got to have a front mud guard I don't believe that at all he said this before I don't believe it at all is a front mud guard a legal requirement i don't think it is no it's perfectly legal however as soon as there is any moisture on the road you'll regret removing it i'll <laughs> say oh here we go a front mud guard is a legal requirement that says So, you're actually more chance of filling an MOT with a front mud guard than without one because it's actually part of it isn't actually part of an MOT test. This is Vosha quote: MOT guidelines on front mud guards. The mud guard is not test is a tested item as part of the MOT test. Its condition, size, and position have no bearing on the test unless the mud guard, if fitted, adversely affects the rotation of the front wheel. Uh, this goes back to what I've said in the first issue. So just to recap, is only a period it's checked out of uh, worn and defective parts. It doesn't check whether the bike is actually rolled. However, if you still fill an MOT without one. So the MSVA says, Motorcycle mudguard requirements are contained in the reg regulation 63 of the road vehicle construction and use. Right, so construction and use generally means... This is what you have to have to pass to sell in the country. Let's see what else it says. Uh, 986. I'm taking this verbatim. As amended, it states that motorcycles are required to have a front mud guard fitted with catch. So far as practical, or with catch, I think it's to catch, mud or water thrown up the rotation of the wheel. So you've established that you need a front mud guard, but how much tyre does it need to cover? Uh, they are legally required with regards to size. Oh, no, no, I want to know. Regulation, here we are. Regulation 63 of the Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations, 1986, provided for the fitting of wings or mudguards to vehicles to prevent mud or water being thrown up by the vehicle or tracks. This regulation applies to invalid carriages, heavy motor cars, motor cars and motorcycles not being out agricultural motor vehicles or pedestrian control vehicles driven at more than what is it more than is it broken down vehicle heavy motor car it's a bit but it's not an MOT failure so the regulations say that all vehicles have to be fitted with mud guards there's loads that aren't but that's what the regulations say if a copper ever knows that and knows the regulation code for that, uh, this is, there's probably one. <laughs> uh, but it's not an MOT failure, so it's not part of your MOT test. Uh, I haven't seen it from the .gov thing, but I'm sure I'm sure that's correct. Some way, and I'm going to do something a bit interesting now. My good buddy Mackie's just done a front mud guard on his Street Fighter project on the XV calf racer that he's making. Really cool. It. Well, is it a Street Fighter or a calf racer? Job. There's two things he did that I was going to do, which means I can't do it now because I don't copy anyone. And it just goes to show that he and I think very similar. And of course, when you're fabricating anything... Oh, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't. There are millions of ways <laughs> to do things. Great minds think alike. And I was going to do one thing that he's done on this. I'm going to have to rethink. And I like that. It pushes me. It stretches me. It makes me work a little bit harder to make a different result. So I'm going to have a little head scratch in the next few days and work out the right way to make the brackets. Because scratch this... anymore. It's all going to fall off. It's upside down forks. They've got four mount points for the original big plastic fender but it's going to be a small thing but it's got to fit in with this look it's going to work with that visually without also detracting from that so there's quite a tall order i'm gonna have a little think and make that work not sure yet but again i always find the best thinking is done when you've got tools in your hand and you're actually doing it can't do it in theory it doesn't work can't do anything in theory it has to be in practice otherwise it's just thoughts and words in it, which is meaningless. So there we go, that's that done. Another four hours on the build, back to the build. Sorry for those who've been following this, who felt that perhaps we abandoned it. We didn't, as I said at the beginning, this has just been one of those things I wanted to put a second project into the garage at the same time. So there now will be the odd little job on the XJR turbo bike coming in. 
like I said, so we've got to paint the wheels, possibly paint the forks. There are a few other little bits I want to paint. I'm getting a black rain screen cover for that blue air filter, so that will not... I don't care about all that shit. Let's move on to the next one, because he's just talking about nonsense now. Uh, Fab Fender, number 82. <laughs> Cut the shit music. What's he doing? Oh, he's putting stickers, more sponsors on. We're in the money, we're in the money. Right, okay, welcome back. Now, this is a quite means of an explanation that's gone up just because a little thank you and a gratitude to the guys at Recon because we found that some of you guys in the UK can't necessarily find the We Are tools, not only that, but other interesting tools as well. So, Interest, interesting tools. No, I want tools that work, fuckhead. I don't want interesting tools. Uh... Merchandise, we heart us off. Oh, ah, right, I see. So, well, why is oh, bollocks? I don't believe you. I don't believe that in nine, in 2017, 2017, right? I don't believe in 2017 that people just couldn't go online and find we heart shit. I don't believe that. Amazon, you name it, all over the place. This is 2017, not 1912, right? It, 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 or 1998. It's recent. It's modern recent. If you need stuff, equipment, tools, bits and pieces, then especially WeHar, for instance, then you can get hold of them from Recon. They're, they're a licensed or agreed supplier of them. Licensed supplier. Now, we're not showing any preference to them. We're just saying they are a supplier you can use. because many Well, you are showing preference because in every video it's in the background. If you're into a semi And in his new garage. I'm sure these have both disappeared. You can't find the WeHar stuff. You can only find it on an international website and with shipping is quite... Don't believe you. Do not believe you. D d <laughs> well, let's see if that's true. If I can find it anywhere that's normal now. Because uh, things haven't just all of a sudden changed. Uh, DigiKey, do it. Right. I don't know how long DigiKey have been in business for, but DigiKey are there. Um, DigiKey is not really, really anything that I use. So, VHA, there. Right. And then we've got RS. Right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, their actual website, uh, Amazon do v VHAR, Prime Tools do it, um, Express Electrical, I don't know, Screwfix, <laughs> fucking Screwfix, fucking eBay, Screwfix has only been around for about a year, so, <laughs> actually, I don't know how long, Screw. I will say, I don't know how long Screwfix have been hold, but uh, Screwfix, how long has Screwfix been around? Um, oh, 1979. Right. Uh... <laughs> oh, it was acquired by uh, Kingfisher. Yeah, who owns B? I know, I know that. It's because I was in B and Q the other day, and there was a thing that had a Screwfix label on it. I can't remember what the fuck it was, but it had Screwfix written on it, even though it's in B and Q. Uh, 1999. So in 1999. Uh, let's have a look about this time. 2015, so the launch of Screwfix Quick Shop app. Oh, so in 2015, they had an app where you scan QR codes. Right, right, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, it was easily, easily around, right? It's nonsense, it's nonsense. Amazon have been around for donkey's years expensive so if you contact them they might be able to help you that's just as a thanks to them also they help us out with some tools it's not that it's not that watch right what it is is it's like oh they helped with some tools he's a liar recon electrical just like spanner monkey now i know when you click on this right i know that there's a dell boys garage thing how long have they been in business for actually company's house that'll tell you how long they've been in business for uh incorporated in 1996 so they've been around for long enough but if you go to their website oh look at that we're just we're just helping each other out oh my god i can't believe that recon or anything to do with them it's crazy you do realize that it's a fucking bandit it, it basically it 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 puts a stain on your look when you click on his icon. It doesn't take you. It doesn't take you to his. It doesn't take you to his thing. It just takes you to these these tools. 
Which is all Weeha stuff. Sheet metal punches. Let's see if you can see whatever he's got in here. Right. Let's have a quick gander. Tool sets. Let's see if any of the tool sets that he's got. Oh, look. The Weeha talk thingy for 238 quid. Oh, my God. Right. Um, oh, no, sorry. Tool sets. Uh, is there a Godot? There's a Godot red set that he has <laughs> in the top of his toolbox. What else is there? Oh, look, there's the mini stubby that he had. Oh, yeah, look. He's <laughs> just literally everything that he has. Look, fuck him. How dare you? Um, not really much of the other stuff I've really seen. Uh, so let's go back to hand tools. So, oh, same kind of thing. Oh, the flick out. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, the drill. Remember the multi purpose drill sharpening piece of shite that was rubbish and he never used again? Uh, that's quite funny. Uh, the wee hard grips, the parallel grips that he's got. We haven't seen the work torch. Give him a minute. Um, yeah, so this thing. £17.40. It drips. Uh, it's not, there, that, this thing. It, it drips quality. Shit. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Pliers, personal PPE, the hole punching jobby, torch. They ain't got much, have they? Screwdrivers. They haven't really got much in the Dell collection. They've got pretty. VDE stuff. What the fucking Dell's never used anything that's VDE, which is basically it's electrician stuff. It's electrician safe. I say safe, and you take your chances. <laughs> gloves that he. Oh yeah, he does have these. He does have the, the some of the gloves there. Uh, cable routing. I don't. I can't remember Dell using any of that. What's this? Sharpening, grinding, and no, I haven't seen any of these. I'm surprised we haven't seen his uh, hole punch. But I think someone bought him that. Um, and measuring equipment. Oh, look! Oh, look! Plastic calipers. E e ESD safe, because <laughs> Dell does that stuff. <laughs> Electrostatic safe fucking stuff. Shut up. Jesus. It is funny, isn't it? So that, that's what they're... So you're associated with a clown... But whatever, let them go. Let them get on with it. For the garage, and we really appreciate that. We've got a little um, prize draw coming up and stuff that they supplied. So you'll like that. Something really interesting and quite left field. You. It, it feels so snuck under the rug. Does all. Quite enjoy that, and that will come up instead of saying, um, "This this spot, this video is sponsored by Brilliant." You know, blah 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 blah. Skillshare or fucking Raid Channel Legends. <laughs> Or whatever, just be honest about it. No, oh, we just, no, it's, it's, uh, we just, uh, we just thought you'd like it, and we're just saying thanks to people. It's, it, it's advertising. It's advertising. Perhaps in the beginning of next month, because we've got this month's prize draws already sewn up. So there we are. Something coming more on them. So I think it's because back in the day, Del whinged in a couple of videos about people selling out. And some of his favourite YouTubers, he was saying. I can't remember the quote, but it was basically something like, my favourite YouTubers, they're all sellouts. They get big numbers and then they start selling out. And I'm like, and he's backpedalling again. Check out the guys at Recon, check out the website. Um, again, as somebody that I watch elsewhere on the tube always says, if you support my supporters, then they can support me. And everybody has a great time on YouTube. That's what it's all about. Right. So today, my God, um, from my God on that. Who says that? It's raining today, so I'm... I don't know if anyone knows who says that. I'm just curious. I was going to go out on the turbo bike, but that ain't going to happen. So today I'm back on this, and I know that you'll love that. So this is what is next. The last fabrication job on the bike is going to be the front mudguard. It's the 480 mudguard. But then after that, it's renewing and replenish, replenishing, refurbishing everything. Um, got to paint the wheels, change the chain and sprockets. I've got bearings and bushes to replace, cush drives, all sorts of stuff to refurbish everything, go right through that bike and make it good again. But before I can do that, I've got one more fab job to do and that's this this is a donor mud guard um i found it at an auto jungle for a princely sum of just 10 pounds which is pretty cool it's stainless steel as you can see absolutely ginormous um it has a bespoke one-of-a-kind rack made by heath and robinson limited which i thought is rather fantastic 
Dude. Have you heard him? They're better welds than yours. <laughs> Painted in hammer, right? So that'll come off. Don't need that. Um, the... I, he's a cunt, isn't he? He's just a cunt. Guy didn't, I said to him, take that off. I don't want it. I just want that. And he said, no, I can't be bothered. Have a lot. So there we go. I've got the lot. You... Well, yeah. You bought it. He's trying to get rid of junk, not trying to keep it. You can see, it's kind of, is it a trade? I don't know. One of you knowers out there might tell me what this is from. I have absolutely no idea. It's stainless steel of the highest quality in the sense that it's not even magnetic. So I'm going to have to weld it. <laughs> it's not even magnetic because things that are magnetic are not good quality. With stainless, a bit higher temperature, but that's cool. I love it. It means that it what, won't what, rot. What, 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 what? So I'm going to have to weld it with stainless, a little bit higher temperature, but that's cool. I love it. It means that it won't rot, which is cool. Um, it's too wide to go between the forks, so it's going to have to be sectioned down the middle and made a bit narrower. And I can do all kinds because there's masses of it, look. Masses and masses of it. What the hell doesn't know, because he doesn't know anything, is that that is going to warp like fuck. One, it's stainless, but number two is to get that panel into that shape, you have to shrink it and, you know, you have to fucking shrink it and stretch it and all this shit. So there are inherent stresses in that, and it's fine. It's actually the inherent stresses in it that keep it in its shape. You know what I mean? Apart from you've literally pushed atoms where they shouldn't belong, or you just squash it into places where it wasn't before. But there are inherent stresses. And you heat this. Oh, this is going to be good. So that's just a donor chop up my garbage I'm going to use. So without further ado, you don't need to hear it talked about. You need to see it done. So let's get on with it. Welcome back. Oh, this is going to be glorious. This is going to be absolutely glorious because it is going to twist on him. We'll do one and a half because he already speeds it up. Uh, so we're going to chop that bit off. You imagine if it just eh, turned like a pretzel. <laughs> ah, measuring a curve. Excellent. Oh, 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 you see, <laughs> this is the problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't write this stuff. <laughs> oh. You have a mud guard, right? You have this mud guard. Uh, there. You have this mud guard like this. And you go, right, I've got this, jeez, this 180 mud guard, this. And I'm thinking, right. We want to make sure. So let's just say you pick a point, right? You go, right, I'm just going to cut that end off, cut that end off. Right, I want it a bit smaller than that. Cut that end off. Right, a bit more small, cut that end off. Right, so I've still got this entire span. If you see what I've cut off, I've cut off almost a half. But no, Del goes, meh. <laughs> now you're stuck. If you want a tiny bit more, you fucked it. God, Jesus. Just cut it in half. What are you doing? That's it. Game over. Why are you cutting a triangle out of it? He's cutting a triangle out of it. Is he wanting it to come... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is even funnier. You can see it twisting. See how that... He's cut that bit of steel and it automatically just springs up. That is the inherent stress that's in this. It wants to straighten, but because of the sides, because of the foldovers, right, because of the flanges in a sense, it, it's stopping it doing that because you'd have to stretch. So them side bits would have to stretch for it to straighten up. So they're holding it in position. Look how much that's straightened out. Oh, you just nip it in. But you see, when you nip that in, the the, the foldovers right, are going to now tuck in. They're going to now nip in because they've literally been pulled in. No, oh, what's going on? Stop it. Oh, oh, we're going too far now. Uh-oh. Just guess it now. Just fuck it. Oh, here we go. Oh, first tack in. Don't, are you, that's that rubber, is he rubber matter? Is that a steel? I think it's a steel top, is it? It's a steel top. 
because he's got his earth clamp to it. I oh, fucked that one up. How are you controlling any kind of twist in this though? I don't know. Using the steel top bench as a heat sink to stop it blowing through. No, if it's hot enough, it'll just weld it to it. So that hasn't twisted. Ripple smooth. Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Ripple smooth. What are you wire brushing it for? Look at that. If you, what are you wire brushing it if you're going to grind it? Now time to plug welds all the holes in. Plug weld all the holes in. Plug the holes. Look at the fucking... Oh, beautiful. And look how deep, look how deep those scratches are. He's gone straight in with a 40 grit, hasn't he? So, you got to remember, right, is that... Let's see if we can actually get a good picture before I start gassing. Come on. There, right? So all this shit, what the fuck is all this? <laughs> you had, oh we're doing this again. Keep it up you fool. So you have this curve like this. Let me get rid of that. And you had this blob of weld, just say, that's here. Like that. I know, it's hard to see isn't it? Well let me just zoom in so you can fucking see. It's that. So what you should do, is you should try and Linish it back so you go. What the fuck are you over here for? <laughs> Why you, you, this metal's only so th now that it's got these massive big 40 grit scratches in you have to polish that out. When you start polishing this shit out with a grinder, or the, you know, with his disc on this flat disc, it, you're thinning this shit out, man. Stop it. Why are you over there? Welding against the slab of old alloy draws the heat and backs the plug. Oh, all the heat. All the weld. All the time. The side holes were huge and ragged, so I had to build up the plug welds. I've never seen... Wow. It's like five. Five tacks, maybe. Maybe his wire speed's really low. Look, I just fucking go for it. Yeah, yeah metal. Mm. In Dell's mind, it's got inf infinite thickness. That's it. That's what we call the hi that's what we call the hiding wheel. I'll try and hide. Now remember, this thing was smooth. Someone had wheeled this, and it was smooth. Oh, look, let's cut some more bits off. How far does this mudguard go back? It doesn't. Oh no, fuck it, cut it. Oh, my friend the Linisher. Hello Linisher, my old friend. <laughs> oh, here we go. No, come on now. All the fucking ammo like a spack. Look at that, he's got his finger right at the top. Oh, here we go. Look. And he's got the spike. Look, he's just braying it into submission. Oh, no. No, that weld wire in it. Oh, oh. Look at that wonderful rolled edge that someone put in it. Right, It looks like they killed it round some wire, then whipped the wire out on the sides. Lovely, look at it. Oh, Jesus, look. You can just see it there, that little circle if you're not on your phone. It's lovely. It's a full curl. God. I'd love to meet whoever made that. 
He's probably dead, but I'd love to meet whoever made that and then just show him this and watch him just laugh or cry. One or the other. I'm surprised. Oh, fuck me. I'm surprised. <laughs> Look at the state of that. I'm surprised it didn't make it out of another tank. Using a mud guard to make a mud guard. That's very original, though. I thought you would make set trends. Do you not follow them? <laughs> Lots of people. Lots of people make mud guards out of mud guards. <laughs> Look how ripple smooth it all is. Fuck me. Did you even actually measure the arc? Like, the arc, it looks like it's nipping the tyre. Oh, no. Dell, you do realise that tyres expand well they don't when you're not at the top, but, yeah. Like, tyres at the bottom bulge out a bit. Right then, let's see the bullshit. God, we've got quite a lot done in this one. This is an hour and five minutes, but we're nearly at the end. Of three episodes. Right, here we go. That's the basic structure of the front part. What about the back of it? Done. I think this is probably going to be a few videos, this bit. Because um, I can see, I know what I want to do now. I've got a little bit of insight as to where I want to go with this. Uh, the line of it's quite nice, but as you can see, I want to lift it up at the rear and bring it down more at the front. Uh, so it doesn't literally follow the wheel exactly. That would just look a bit obvious. I think I want to do it differently. There's a reason for that. And make some it's like, why do people want all their windows in their houses to line up? <laughs> Dickheads. Something unique. That's what this whole bike is about. I want to push myself a little bit with fabrication too. There are some mounts on the side here. You've got three on each side so I can bring something creative along to the front and blend that in. Maybe I don't know. I don't know yet. I'm going to make it as I go along. But the basic structure of yeah, the front we, half is we know, we know, we know. important to do first of all. Tapered it in, channeled it right down the centre. That was loads of fun doing that. Little tricks with the tape so you get a straight line. You can do all that sort of thing. And then once you've got it all welded, then I had to put that, that lip in there. I wanted to fold it over neatly like the rest of it and I tried I got it about halfway with the hammers but honestly it started to split in places and it wasn't going to fold right over that's because you don't know what you're doing nicely so in the end I just welded that piece of wire around the inside made a solid metal lip about four mil thick now and then just ground that back so it's a perfect shape that's lovely that's a really lovely solid thick metal front edge on that mudguard that's really how it should be to take out birds and flying rats and all sorts of shit. There's no way you could afford to have that as a cut edge. There's just no way. Uh, and even whatever bodywork you do to it, it's always going to be a vulnerable edge. So nice and soft and round, that will hold the paint and it will just be safe. <laughs> safe in case you hit something like that, you know, nice sharp metal edge on the front, all that old stuff. Well, no, I love when it, it, it's a thing from, you know, when you go and do these, when you build your own machine, you go do the testing to, you know, get it registered. It's bullshit, right? It's like, listen to what he just says. Safe. Safe in case you hit someone like that, you know, nice shot. Yeah, when you hit somebody with the entire fucking 200 kilo motorcycle. Are you fucking kidding me? The last, the, the least of their problems, the least of their problems is the colour of the motorcycle. The second least is, oh no, that, that sharp mudguard lip cut my caved in body cavity. Where my heart and lungs used to live. Fuck's sake. <laughs> that edge on the front, all that old stuff. So I'm comfortable with that. Also, I want to bring this down a bit, as you can see. Kind of high booster style the way it's down at the front more rather than just up here. I like that, and I think it goes with this sort of look. Um, may bring it yeah, in. The high booster had all these things for a reason, though. Further forward, not sure yet. I can do all sorts at this point. You can't, because you cut the entire back of it off. There's loads and loads of scope. There isn't loads of scope. You like this? Pull it a slight bit forward before I run out of fucking room between the four. Right out to there. That'd look pretty cool right down at the front. You know, there's loads and loads of options, so I'm going to work with it as I go along. Got the back section to do, then some way of joining the two of them in a unique and interesting the back section. You cut it off. Way I may do a little cut out just here so that visually that looks like that fits into it. That will be a nice little touch, maybe. I don't know. That's easy enough to do. I can imagine just cut that out, but a flat section in. Uh, as long as it doesn't ingress down too much, so it touches the tire. And obviously the mounts, I can be really creative with those. But there we are, oh. that's it for now. Basic structure done. Not this is actually going to be quite fun. Nice and solid, nice and beef. And I'm really happy I spent... Nice and beef. And 10 quid on a gash mud guard. There we are. Join us tomorrow for the prize draw. Take easy, ride safe. See you next time. I hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.